God is good. And all the time. Have you observed in that very popular psalm, perhaps the most popular chapter of the Bible, Psalm 23, it is all God, 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 God. When God called Abraham, he said, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. I will bless them that curse thee. I will curse. The relationship between God and the believer is very one-sided. God asks for one thing. Obey me. And then he says, leave all the rest. Come on to me. Just do what I say. That is all he asks. Plain and simple obedience. It's my favorite word, even though it is a word the carnal nature absolutely hates. How are you? Nice to see you. Did you have a good day? I'll tell you a secret. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> An honest lady said no. She must be a vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> Here's the secret. During the day, I think of you and I miss you. I really do. When my friends write me, how are you doing? I tell them, I am enjoying myself with the church family. Small group, but a lovely, active, attentive group. And so really, I miss you during the day. Does anyone miss me just a little bit? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I had to do a little fishing. Okay. Let me welcome those of you among us who are not Seventh-day Adventists. May I see your hands? You're not a seventh. Ah, okay. What's your name? Faith Ofe, with an E or no E. I have a, a sister-in-law called Faye. Yeah, how are you, Sister Faye? Nice to see you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. My dear sister, what's your name? Patricia. That's a good name. But it's not in the Bible, but it's a good name. Nice to see you, Patricia. How are you, Patricia? Where are you from? Jamaica's a good place. I spent a year in Jamaica in a place called Mandeville. Gets very cold around December, January, yes. Yes, cool, but I loved it very much. Anybody else? Did I see another hand? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. Where? Ah, oh, what's your name? Andrea. How are you, Andrea? Where are you from? Man, oh, are you? Okay, oh, but I was there before you were born. But it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. God bless you, Andrea. Anybody else? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. We are very nice people. Anybody else? You're not. A, if you know someone who's hiding, just do that. I've told you that before. Where? Oh, <laughs> right under my nose. How are you? What is your name? Takesha. Nikisha. Hello, Nakisha. Where are you from? Florida. Florida is a good place. It's a sunshine state. And the Bible says Christ is the son of righteousness. Thank you very much for coming. Anybody else? For those of you online, you're not Seventh-day Adventists. We are delighted to have you. And may God, who is a generous God, God cannot help himself. He loves to give. May he bless your lives in every possible way. Let me offer a special prayer for all our guests. Loving Father in heaven, we're always honored by the presence of guests among us, and we have some tonight in the building and online. I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for them. And because you love them, because you sent Christ, bless them, their Father. Father, prepare some streamlined blessings that fit them precisely in these circumstances, that they may know that the God of heaven and earth, the God of creation, has moved in their lives. If they have children, put a double blessing on their children, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject for this evening, an extreme makeover. What did I say? An extreme makeover. Before I, uh, oh, let me uh, say hi to some people. I want to say hi to a brother in North Carolina, Brother Burke, wherever you are. I understand you love the Word of God, and I'm delighted to know that. May the Lord bless you, love it, study it, and obey it, because the Word of God is life. Brother Burke in North Carolina. I have some friends in Nairobi, Kenya, who tell me, greet the church for them. 
They are the Ochola's lovely family, very precious to me. The father and mother, Elias and Christine, if you're watching, God bless you, bless you beyond your imagination. God bless Kenya and all other countries connected via the internet. All right, what's our subject? An extreme makeover. Before we get into that, it's now two minutes to eight. I'll release you by 8.40. If you aren't using a phone as a Bible, which it isn't, please turn it off. But if you are using it, turn the sound down. I'm very old-fashioned, so I like these, because they don't ring. Are you with me? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> and you don't plug them in. They come powerful, and they stay powered. Can you say amen? But you got to plug these things in. All right. So please show reverence for God and make sure it does not ring in the house of God. Let me check mine before I come across as being hypocritical. All right, mine is off. Favor number two, what is that? While I'm speaking... And say what? Lord, yes, it's a very, very serious request. Put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, what does that say? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I want God to put his eternal words in my mouth made of dirt. Number three, what's that favor? Think. What verse do we use? Isaiah 118, which says what? Come now and let us reason together. This, the, this, the, the example I always use of reasoning, here's a lady who's going to the gym to lose weight. After three months, she gains 30 pounds. Are you with me? She needs to stop and do what? Think. What am I doing? Think. Something's not working. A young man came to me many years ago. I was an academic counselor at a medical school. He said, I want to go to medical school. I said, fine. Let's discuss your transcript. Show me the grades you get. Physiology, C. Chemistry, C. <laughs> Biology, C-ish. And so I said, wait a minute. Do you want to be a medical doctor or witch doctor? What are you trying to be? <laughs> You've got to stop and think. What am I doing? Why are you with that man? Why are you with that woman? Young lady, since you met that young man, you're fighting with your parents. Your grades have gone down. You no longer go to church. Something is wrong. Stop and think. Somebody say amen for think. Let's pray. Dear God, I am human, made of dirt. Not just dirt, but the dust of the ground. Because of this day, God, I am unable, unequipped, unqualified of myself to handle the eternal word. And so I ask you today, God, since you sent me on this mission, I did not seek it. Help me as much as you will. Begin by cleansing me from sin. Put your words in my mouth, my heart, my mind. Grip me, Father, in an iron grip. So that what I say becomes what you say. What I think are your thoughts. How I behave is your conduct. Father, let the Spirit working through me enlighten those listening. Pour out a special blessing, dear God, on all our guests in this building and online. A sweet blessing on all the little boys and girls who might be watching. Bless every nation represented by those watching, I pray. Particularly the host nation of the United States. Father, touch the sick. Give them relief. If you choose not to give total healing, give relief because you do not love to see suffering. Now, Father, with this one message, let everyone be touched in his or her area of need. In Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say amen and amen. Go with me to John. What's our subject? An extreme makeover. John chapter 4. We read 23. And 24. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible. John chapter 4, 23 and 24. While you're looking for it, let me tell you, I love sm speaking to small congregations, audiences, groups. It's always very intimate. I mean, I've spoken to thousands of thousands. I couldn't see the rafters. But I can see all of you. I can see who's sleeping. I can see you. So I like small groups. Are you with me? All right. Have you found John chapter 4? Verse 23 and verse 24. Read with me if you have my version. 
But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father how? In spirit and in truth. Finish the verse. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Pause. Let me digress immediately. The verse just informed us God is looking for people who will worship him how? Keep going. And in truth. If he finds you only worshiping in spirit and there's no truth, it's the wrong spirit. Because there are two spirits. The one down this way and the one that way. God is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, read verse 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's restate line number one of verse 24. God is a spirit. Let's learn something about being a spirit. Because our subject is an extreme makeover. Go to Luke 24. We'll read from verse 36. How is my speed so far tonight? It's all right? Okay. Will you correct me if I go too quickly? You say yes now, but you never have. But maybe you were converted tonight. All right. What book did I say? Luke. What chapter? 24. What verse? From 36. When you found it, say amen. amen. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, What? Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen what a spirit spouse we read in john 4 24 god is a spirit they supposed they had seen a spirit and he said unto them why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts behold my hands and my feet that it is i myself handle me and see finish the verse for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Now, we've learned something about a spirit. What have we learned? It does not have a skeleton. No skin. Now, keep in mind, we're human beings. Our understanding is severely limited. And we're trying to understand a limitless God. Are you following me? So we'll struggle. We understand existence as two eyes, a nose, hands, fingers, toenails, whatever else. That's all we know. It is difficult to conceive of existence in a different way. But Jesus Christ said, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. That's one thing we've learned about a spirit. Now, keep reading. What does the next verse say? And when he had... That's spoken, he showed unto them his hands and his. Why? He showed them the marks of the crucifixion. You cannot put a mark on a spirit. Why? He does not have flesh and bones. So Christ is saying, I'm real. I'm not a ghost. I am not Casper, the friendly ghost, if you're old enough to remember that character. Now, verse 41, what does that say? And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a, and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. Now, Jesus introduces two proofs that he's not a spirit. What's the first one? I don't have, yeah, a spirit does not have flesh and bones. What's the second proof? A spirit does not eat. I've lost you already. Have I lost you? Okay, forgive me. I misjudged you. A spirit does not eat. What does the Bible say about God? John 4, 24. God is a spirit. Mm, that's fine. Thank you for your eagerness. God is a spirit. And Jesus said, a spirit does not have flesh and bones, and a spirit does not eat. He was proving I am flesh and bone. I am not a spirit. I am real. This is the human Jesus. Keep this in mind. Are you with me? All right. Let's learn something else about this spirit that God is. Let us go to 1 Kings chapter 3 
We read verse 9 and verse 10. This is the closing words of the prayer of Solomon when God uh, anointed him to take the place of his father David. 1 Kings chapter 3, 9 and 10. <clears throat> Our subject, an extreme makeover. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. What does that say? Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I might discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Carefully now, read verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. What do we learn about God? Who's a spirit? He can be pleased. So he has emotional reactions. Go to Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Let's read verse 1. An extreme makeover is our subject. Numbers chapter 11. Let's read verse 1. Very simple. Read it for me. What does that say? And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. So we have the opposite side of the spectrum. He was pleased with Solomon. He was displeased with the complaining. By the way, God does not like complaints. And if people will stop complaining, church boards will run much more smoothly. <laughs> complaining is not a spiritual gift. Getting along is a spiritual gift. Complaining is not a spiritual gift. Fault finding is not a spiritual gift. Being a spiritual policeman is not a spiritual gift. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. So God is pleased and God is displeased. Let us go to Exodus chapter 4. We read from verse 10. Exodus 4 from verse 10. Our subject, an extreme makeover it is now 10 minutes after 8. I'll release you sometime after 8.30. Sometime can mean any time. I'll try to be more precise as I go along. Please don't panic. What book did I say? Exodus what chapter? 4 from verse 10. Let me pray again. Father in heaven, continue to speak through me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, What? Who hath made man's mouth? Or who may give the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Verse 12, nice and clear. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou... By the way, when you go to preach anywhere, remember this promise. Not if you invite yourself. Are you with me? If you're invited. You see, God sent Moses so he can say, Now therefore, go. I will be with thy mouth and teach you what I... Now, verse 13 says what? And he said, Oh my God, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. Now carefully, read verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Stop. What do we learn about this spirit that has no flesh and bones? He can get angry. Mm -hmm. Like a fire. He gets pleased. He gets displeased. He gets angry. Go to Genesis 6. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject, an extreme makeover. Genesis 6, verse 1, or from verse 1. Do you have it? I still hear the pages turning. Genesis 6, first book of the Bible. Do you have it now? Read with me. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. Go on. There were giants in the earth. And I also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. Pause. Now read five carefully. And God saw... 
that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually stopped. Look at the first line of that verse and what do you learn about God? Well, it's more than seeing optically. And God said, let there be light, and God saw the light, it was good. God can assess, evaluate. Are you seeing me? He can look at the situation and assess it correctly. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that, and this is almost impossible to believe, every, there are some people, all they think of is evil. How to rip you off. How to cause trouble. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, read verse 6 carefully. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved them at his heart. God can feel sorry. How he does it, I can't give you the details. It re <laughs> Let me apply that personally. Every day you and I live, when we come to the end of the day, let us hope that God looks down and says to us, I am, does not say to us, I am sorry, what? I let him live. I am sorry I let her live. I should have taken her in the womb so she had, her mother would have had a stillbirth. It repented God that he'd made man on the earth. Let us so live that God looks at us and God says, I know him. I know her. As he said of Abraham, I know him. And Abraham was called the friend of God. David was called a man after God's own heart. Let God say that. Do not let God say, I am sorry. I let Randy Skid live. And so it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Now, let's go to John chapter 5. John 5, we'll read verse 37. Our subject, an extreme makeover, 8.15 on the dot. Do you have John 5, verse 37? I can hear pages still turning. Gospel number 4. Do you have it now? Read with me. What does that say? And the Father himself, which have sent me, have borne witness of me. Carefully now, ye have neither this voice, come on, at any time, nor seen his shape. Stop. We learn two things about God in that verse. What are the two things? He has a voice. <laughs> he has a shape. But he doesn't have bones or flesh. He's God. All we can say is, he's God. How oxygen gets from my lungs to my cells, I don't fully understand. All I can say is, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> How carbon dioxide gets from my cells to the lungs and out, I do not fully understand. When you and I sleep at night, we make no conscious decision to breathe. The body takes over and breathe for us. How that happens, I have no clue. But let me tell you, praise God, it happens. Which means God is watching over you while you're sleeping. Come on, somebody say amen for God. God is a nice person. He has a voice. And he has a shape. Yet, he does not have flesh and bones. And he does not eat. All we can say is... He is God. Now, let's learn something else about God. Go to Isaiah chapter 40. 4-0. We read verse 28. Come on in, come on in. We're glad you've come. Come on in, come on in. Let the sister come through. God bless you. God bless you. Say amen for our guest. All right, what book did I say? Isaiah, what chapter? 40, what verse? 28. Read with me if you have my version. What does it say? Hast thou not 
Known hast thou not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Finish the verse. Fainteth not, neither is weary. Stop. What have we learned about God? He does not get tired. He does not get tired. Finish the first. What else have we learned? There is no searching of his understanding. His wisdom is limitless. Now, let's review. What have we learned about God who's a spirit so far? Someone on this side, quickly, too slow. That side. What? No bones. That side. He's what? He never gets tired. It's this side. He's what? He's pleased. He can be pleased. That side. He can be displeased. You're cheating from this side, but it's okay. <laughs> he fainteth not. He gets angry. He has a voice and he has a shape, but he has no bones and no flesh. How that happens, all we can say is, he's God. He can evaluate. Blessings upon you, my brother. Yes, this is God. And his wisdom is limitless. Now, go to Hebrews 1. Let's get into the heart of an extreme makeover. Hebrews 1. Do you have Hebrews 1? Let's read from verse 1 just to read the Bible. We don't read it enough. When you found it, say amen. Read with me, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Slowly now, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Stop. Who being the brightness of his glory, who is who? Think. Jesus, yeah. Who being the brightness of his glory, who is his? The Father. Jesus is the full brightness of the Father's glory. Keep reading. And the express image, the exact, the precise reflection of his, and the Greek with this, substance of his person. Whatever God is made of, that's what Jesus was before he came to the earth. Are you following me? The substance of the Father was the substance of Jesus. And so all we read about the Father who's a spirit, we may apply to Christ before he came to this earth. Now let's look at Christ on the earth. Let's go to John chapter 11. We'll read 33 and 34. Subject. An extreme makeover. John 11 at the tomb of Lazarus, 33 and 34. Then I'll give you a quiz question. My friends online, I hope you're still with us. Do you have John 11, 33? Read with me. What does that say? When, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping, also weeping, which came with her, he, was, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And said unto them, where have ye laid him? Stop. Where have ye laid whom? Lazarus. Why would Jesus say, where have ye laid him? He didn't know. But we found out in Isaiah 40 verse 28, there is no searching of his understanding. But this is not Jesus, the spirit. This is Jesus, the human being. Are you with me? He has gone through what? What's our subject? An extreme makeover. Now, he does not know in his humanity. He was both on the earth, God and man. But he met trials and tribulations. He met Satan as a man trusting God. And so he said, where have you laid him? I don't know. Let's go to John 4. John chapter 4, we're 11. Let's skip backwards to chapter 4. We'll read verse 6, I believe it is. Do you have John 4? Verse 6, read with me, what does that say? That's there, and Jesus, therefore being wearied with his journey, come on, sat 
on now what do you learn about jesus in that verse he was tired but what did we read in isaiah 40 28 hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the, the, the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not come on neither is weary jesus in his humanity was weary why because he went through a extreme makeover now he experiences exhaustion foreign to God are you with me let's go to John stay in John 4 let's read verse 31 John chapter 4 verse 31 are you there read with us what does that say in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him say what master eat why did they say that he was hungry but we know from luke 24 a spirit does not eat why do we eat not just because you're hungry why do we eat <laughs> to preserve but jesus is life god is life since god is life does god does not have to eat to preserve life he is life We read, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, all that we read about God, no flesh, no bones, all of that we read applied to Christ before he became human. Let's go to Revelation 1. Let's read for seven. Before we go there, let's read 1 Timothy 6.16. 1 Timothy 6.16, our subject, an extreme makeover, is now 8.25. Do you have 1 Timothy chapter 6? Verse 16. Read with me. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in light which no man can approach unto the stop. Who alone hath immortality? God. Whether God the Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. God has immortality. Keep this in mind. What does immortality mean? You cannot die. What did Jesus say at Lazarus' tomb? I am the resurrection. Come on. And the life. The Father's the same thing. Now, keeping in mind, Christ, before he became human, had natural immortality. Go to Revelation 1. Let's read from verse 17. Revelation 1, reading from verse 17. Our subject, an extreme makeover. Revelation 1, and I'm going a little quickly, and you're saying nothing. Uh... At least you're consistent in your rebellion. What book did I say? Revelation. What chapter? One from what verse? 17. Let me pray again. Father, help me to slow down so that the message may be comprehended without any hindrance, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And when I saw him come on, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, what? Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Stop. Jesus said, I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. But he said, I was dead. Now, there's some religions that, not Christian religions, that believe Christ did not really die on the cross. It looked as if he died. Mm -mm. He said, I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of hell and death. I was dead in his humanity. In his divinity, who alone hath immortality. Christ undertook an extreme makeover in order to make salvation available to you. Can you imagine? Well, let's go to uh, Psalm 90. 90. Let's find out something about God. And Christ before Christ became human. By the way, Psalm 90 was written by whom? Yes, I was about to trick you, but I failed. I thought you'd say David. No, Psalm 90 was written by, Mo by uh, Moses. Yeah. It's one of the most powerful Psalms you can ever read. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read with me. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains are brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world carefully now even from everlasting to everlasting come on thou art god now question for you how long is one everlasting hmm? how long is one 
But in trying to explain that the creator has always been there, Moses writes from everlasting to everlasting. Because he's a human being trying to express a defined concept, which is God has always been there. But listen to the verse again. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. You know who that was? Jesus. So Moses is saying Christ has always been there. What did Jesus tell the Pharisees and scribes before Abraham was? Come on, I am. Not I was, I am. Yet, he came to this earth, suffered an extreme makeover, and experienced a beginning in his humanity, in the womb of a woman. Why? To save you and me from sin. But let's take a little closer look at this extreme makeover. Let's go to Luke 24 again. Luke 24, we read from verse 36 again. We read it before, we read it again. Luke 24, reading from verse 36, our subject, an extreme makeover. I hope someone has said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Who has said that prayer for me? Can I see your hand? God bless you and doubly bless your children. I mean that without joking. I hope someone online has also offered that prayer on my behalf. Never listen to a preacher without praying for that person. Are you following me? All right. What book did I say? Luke. What chapter? 24. What verse? 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, What? Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, What? Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Come on. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Stop. What is he showing them? The marks of the crucifixion. Now think. Is this before he died or after he rose? After he rose. Which means he rose with what? The marks of the crucifixion. Let's discover what kind of body he had when he rose. Go to Philippians chapter 3. So we can really appreciate the fact that Christ rose with the marks of the crucifixion. Mark, not Mark, sorry. What book did I say? Philippians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 20. Our subject, an extreme makeover. 8.30 on the dot. Do you have Philippians? It's the happiest epistle Paul wrote, I believe, of the 14 books scholars believe Paul wrote. 13 or 14. Philippians is the happiest. He had a lovely time with that church. Chapter 3, reading from verse 20. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. What does that say? For our conversation is in heaven. Come on. From whence also we look. Who, Father? The Lord, who shall change our vile bodies. Come on. That it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Stop. When will he change our vile body? When this mortal puts on immortality at the resurrection. And we'll have the same body he had when he came from the grave. A glorious body. But it still has what? The marks of the crucifixion. Which means, right now, in heaven, there is a member of the Godhead with scars. One of us with scars. Ah, you're not listening. You're not touched. Why are you so hard? The, what's our subject? It not only affected Christ, it affected the highest level of power in heaven, that is the Godhead. One of them is scarred. You know how we are, ladies. You see a pimple, you spend $220 to have it laser removed. And you need six treatments. <laughs> are you following me? Christ will have his forever. for you and you won't make one change for him you refuse to give up a cigarette for God you refuse to give up that no good man for God that alcohol for God that gambling for God a God who went through an extreme makeover even if it had been to save one person well let's look at how extreme the makeover is 
There is a member of the Godhead who has scars, yes or no? Yes, but that person is both divine and human. And so the Godhead, it changed. Because one of them is now a human being who's also God. But when you look at him, you see a human being. Nobody's impressed. Uh, I'm not coming back to sunrise. Nope. <laughs> oh, you're touched. Okay. Uh, ah, God bless you. I repent. You touched. One person touched on that side. Anybody touched on this side? There is a human being. I love to say this in my sermons. In the Godhead. And he looks like you. Much prettier, but he looks <laughs> like you. He has hands. Come on. He has feet. He has a head. He has a nose. He has some scars. He looks like you. He's also God, but he looks like you. Because no man has seen God. Christ went through an extreme makeover. And some of the elements of that makeover will remain, come on, forever. Why? To save you. And how do we say thanks? We sin. How do we say thanks? We won't refuse someone who hurt us. How do we say thanks? We lie and steal and get drunk and smoke and take drugs. and That's how we say thanks. And expect God to take that lying down. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a makeover? God went through all of that. God can't die. Christ came in his makeover and experienced death. The Bible says in James 1, 13 to 15, God cannot be tempted. Christ in his great makeover experienced temptation. At his crucifixion or in the trial, do you know the soldiers blindfolded him and punched him in his face and said, tell us, who hit you? Now, <laughs> how do you punch God in the face? They spat in his face. I have a friend, he's an elder at a church somewhere on the face of the earth. And <laughs> I said to him, if someone spat in your face, what would happen? He said, well, I don't know what would happen, but something would happen. <laughs> I said, no, you're a Christian. <laughs> you're supposed to take it like Jesus. He said, I don't know what will happen, but something will happen. <laughs> so I had to pray for him a little more. <laughs> but he's a child of God. What I'm trying to say is, there are a lot of things we can take. Spit in our face. You must be crazy. Jesus took it. It was part of his makeover. Take, in the United States, we have a saying, I don't take stuff from anybody. Jesus took stuff for us. How do we reward him? We give him stuff. My brothers and sisters, this makeover was done for your benefit. To save you that Jesus might understand what it's like to be tempted. What it's like to be hungry. What is it like to be rejected by family members? What is it like to be tired? What is it like to be broke? What is it like to be homeless? In pain. On the cross. He asked for one thing for himself. He said, I'm thirsty. He never got it. The water. He experienced what you and I go through. So while we talk about this extreme makeover which affected the Godhead, it is also comforting to know there's a member of the Godhead who experientially knows how we feel because he went through it. Can you say amen? But he also experientially knows how the Father thinks. Can you say amen? And so he can grab you huh, and grab the Father and unite the two of you in Jesus. That's the only way it could have worked. He had to become one of us. Why is God the Father a spirit? Why is he not physical? Because everything physical is subject to law. Everything physical is limited. Are you with me? But God 
is without limit. So he cannot be physical, but he has a form. <laughs> he has a shape. We read that. He has a voice. He has an emotional structure. He gets angry. He gets pleased. He becomes displeased. He regrets. He is jealous. He saves and he destroys. This is what God has done for you. What have you done for God? Don't tell me. Let me tell you what God wants you to do for him. Give him your life. That he may now reflect himself through you. You see, when Christ was on earth, Christ said to Philip, John 14 verse 9, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. Now Christ wants to say of you and you and you, He that have seen him has seen me. I am not joking. Jesus Christ wants to be seen and reflected in us. The very same way the Father was reflected in him. He wants your life. He wants you to obey him. That's why throughout, particularly in John, Jesus says, as I did, you do. As I did, you do. As, let me show you some examples quickly. Go to John 15. Then I'll close. It's already 20 minutes to 9. John 15. Let's read verse 10. Christ says, as I did, you do. That's the way he and the Father got along. As the Father did, Jesus did. Do you have John 15, 10? Read with me. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father. In other words, you must obey how? The way I obeyed. Go to John 13. Two chapters earlier. John 13. Let's read from 13 to 15. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. Ye call me Master and Lord, for ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought also to wash one another's feet. Carefully now, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done. Here again we have you be humble the way I am humble. You obey the way I obey. Go to First John chapter 2. Let's read verse 6. First John chapter 2 verse 6. Towards the back of the Bible, find Revelation, 3rd John, Jude, 3rd John, 2nd John, 1st John. When you have it, say amen. Read with me. He that saith, he abideth in him, also so to walk. How? Even as he walked, which means live the way Jesus lived. Go to John 15. John 15. I am sorry I have you hitchhiking through the Bible, but I hope you're blessed by it. Learn to move fast. Do you have John 15? Read verse 12. What does that say? This is my commandment that ye love. How? As I have loved you. The Bible tells us we must be as Jesus was. Because Jesus was as the Father was. So here's Christ and the Father. Here's Christ and the believer. The relationship between Christ and the Father must be reflected in Christ and the believer. Mm-hmm. An extreme makeover. You owe God something. You owe him your life. I owe God my life. Many times over. I fly a lot. God takes me all over the world. When I'm on a plane, I thank God for keeping the plane afloat. I thank God for Eli Whitney engines and for whomever, but let me tell you something. If God does not keep that plane in the air, it's coming down. I don't care who, what designers and engineers built that plane, it stays afloat by God's power. And so I owe my life to God over, and I'm ready to give it up for him. If that's what he wants, let me say it again, I am willing and ready to give it up for him in defense of the truth. That's not new. There are people who've gone to, they've burned at the stake because they would not turn back on thus saith the Lord. Are you following me? We know Daniel was willing to be eaten by lions. The three Hebrew boys burned to a crisp. There are people who died eaten by lions in the Roman uh, Colosseum. Why? They would not deny Christ. And I'm willing, if God calls me, to give up this little life to defend the truth. 
because Jesus gave up his life to save me. What's our subject? What changes are you willing to make in your extreme makeover to glorify God? Make a decision. Jesus told Nicodemus, he must be born again. That is an extreme makeover. He did not say he must be improved. He must be born again. All over. An extreme makeover as Christ underwent an extreme makeover. How many of you will say, Father, this has opened my eyes. Thank you for what you've done through Jesus Christ. Would you say that tonight? Let God see you say that. Thank you for what Jesus did. Stand up with me. Thank you for what Jesus did. And his extreme makeover. Just to save me and to save you. The Bible says, The Lord is not willing that any should perish. But it all should come to repentance. The Bible says, God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. In other words, he waits and waits and waits because he does not want to destroy. Let me tell you something about this God. God's destruction of sinners, when he has finally had enough, is so terrible that he does everything in his power to put it off he does not want to do it but we as stubborn sinners force his hand and then he has no choice because justice requires sin be punished my listening friend the extreme makeover that Jesus Christ went through must be the one that we go through through his power God can change your life from a rebel to a disciple, from disobedient to obedient, from always making excuses to being fully surrendered. He can do that because that's his specialty, changing people. He can change you from an alcoholic to someone with a clear mind in control of his faculties. He can change you from a prostitute to a saint from a pimp to a prophet that's Christ's expertise but we have to let him heads bowed eyes closed father in heaven we cannot thank you enough for all that Jesus Christ went through at your request to save us when the Bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, we have no idea what is comprehended by so great salvation. The same concept is in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. But Father, hopefully tonight, our eyes have been opened a little bit, dear God, to see our minds enlightened, to sense the extreme degree to which you went to make salvation possible to us. And why heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If there's a man or a woman who will say, Father, your spirit has touched me. I need to make some serious changes in my life. I said, serious changes. Not just painting a fingernail. I said, serious changes in my life. I need to make serious changes in my life. If the Spirit has convicted you that way, I want to pray for you. Come down to the altar right here. Let's pray. I'm not calling all of you. Someone will say, I need to make serious changes in my life. Come down here. Let's pray. I am not calling all of you. Some of you, I need to make serious changes in my life. Come. Don't be afraid. Come. Pastor, get some cards for me. So I can get the names of God's beloved people. I need to make some serious changes in my life. You may be a member of this church. Come. It's not too late. Jesus made serious changes. And you and I must reciprocate by making serious changes in our lives. Serious changes. Anybody else? 
come. I won't hold you long. It's already 13 minutes tonight. My call is simple. You heard the message tonight. The Spirit of God has moved you individually. And you'll say, God, I need to make serious changes in my life. Come, 60 seconds, then I pray. The 60 seconds begin now. In Lord, in thee, how the love of Four to five seconds. Thirty seconds. I am Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. I need to make serious changes in my life. You make the decision, God gives you the power to make that change. Five seconds. Those online also make that decision please those of you online also make that decision because the Spirit of God with us is with you wherever you are somehow let the members of the church closest to you know of the leaders you've made that decision I need to make serious changes in my life now the 60 seconds are over and I have to pray I want to keep my word heads bowed Just like people finish writing something, then I'll pray. God brought you here tonight for this reason. It was not by accident. God does not deal in accidents. He's deliberate and purposeful. We have one other person finish writing, then I'll pray. I don't want to delay you unnecessarily, but this is life and death we're dealing with. You may never feel the conviction again that you're feeling now as merciful as God is all right heads bowed eyes closed dear God we thank you for your word and its power we thank you for the convicting influence of the Spirit of God Father, all of heaven is interested in our salvation and tonight we have gotten just a glimpse of the degree to which you went to make salvation available to us the extreme makeover that Jesus Christ equal with yourself subjected himself to dear God when we study this we look at it we consider it the conviction we must feel is what can I do for God to say thank you for what he's done for me what can I do give myself to him that he may work in me an extreme makeover a change in my life that as God was glorified in Christ Christ may be glorified in us father your sons your daughters have come in answer to the call some online have responded in the all-conquering name of Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the life who said I and my father are one who said I'm coming again in his name father strengthen and confirm those who've made that decision tonight that they need to make changes in their lives go with them tonight father trouble them with your spirit let no force on earth change their minds bring them back to this place tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon to hear a message again which you will give me for them sustain them tonight father in jesus name i pray let god's people say amen and amen god is good all the time. and all the time god is good just before you go what will you take from the message raise your hand and tell us what will you take from the message yes my sister God went through in Christ an extreme makeover we'll never fully understand somebody else 
What will you take from the message? Raise your hand. Yes, my sister. Jesus will forever have the marks of the crucifixion. It's difficult to believe that you and I, walking through heaven with Jesus, he has marks. We have none. Somebody else, what will you take? Yes, sister. A spirit has no flesh and bones. That's what Jesus said. Somebody else, then I let, yes, my brother. God sees you. Oh, yes, he sees you with all his eyes. Anything else? Oh, yes, but he can also be pleased when you make the right decision. Ah, so he's pleased with you right where you stand. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let God's people say amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Drive safely. Come back tomorrow. God bless you. And I love you.